So I study a type of soil called a vertic soil, and it's found all over the world. We have them right here in the valley. We also have them in Chile, India, Australia, uh, Texas. There's a lot of them in kind of that the delta area. And what I'm really interested in is how water moves through these soils. And so in this, this is kind of the standard setup to measure the hydraulic conductivity of soil, or basically how easily water passes through the soil. And the idea is that you pass a flow of water through the sample and you measure both the pressure across the sample and then the flow of water coming through the sample. And that allows you to determine its hydraulic conductivity. Since I study vertisols, or these uh, swelling clay soils, uh, with that setup, it's a rigid system, so the sample can't really swell. Uh, it's constrained by these brass rings and by this, this cell. So the idea is then, can we have it freely swell? And so we paint it with latex, put it in this system, and that allows it to more freely swell. And so with this system, we can measure both the, the amount of swelling and the flow rate through it. And so we can see how this flow rate changes with time and also with the amount of swelling that the samples have experienced. So we're looking at the particle size distribution of these soils, and what that is, is the percentages of sand, silt, and clay, kind of what size are the particles within a sample, and what's their distribution. And the idea here is we break them up into the individual particles, mix them up, and then measure the density of this solution through time. So the heavy stuff, like the sands, are going to fall out quickly, and the silts, and the clays are going to remain in suspension for a long time. And we use the hydrometer, this is this glass instrument, it's basically the same thing that people use for brewing beer or making wine. It's determining the, the density of the fluid. We're also using a food thickener. It's called guar gum. It thickens water up in a predictable manner to make it more viscous. And we want something, when we go out to the field and we have these big cracks in the soil, we want to know how, how big are the cracks, what are their volumes. And there's not really a good way to, to determine the crack volume that doesn't end up destroying it the soil that you want to measure. So we, come up, we came up with the idea of using this guar gum, this food thickener, to thicken up the water, make it more viscous, and then we can pour in this, this solution and measure the volume. And the idea is if you can fill it a lot faster than the solution infiltrates, you can get a pretty good estimate of the crack volume. And so in this experiment, we're just seeing how the different concentrations of guar gum infiltrate, or how it affects the infiltration rate. So these laboratory experiments we're doing are really to help us understand what we see when we go out to the field and how water is moving through, interacting with and being stored in these vertic soils. Uh, we find these soils a lot of times in productive agricultural regions and so as we look to expand our agricultural operations, try to feed a planet of up to 9 billion people on limited water resources, it's really important to understand these processes so you can make really effective use of our land and our water resources. So the Department of Biological and Ecological Engineering really has amazing faculty looking at a broad range of things from uh, kind of building on the historic legacy of agricultural engineering. We have people looking at irrigation, uh, evaporation, evapotranspiration. We also have people looking at river restoration, making use of our water resources, uh, watershed modeling. And the, the BE department is really strategically affiliated with both the College of Agriculture and the College of Engineering. So we can draw on uh, the strengths and the people within both of these colleges. 